Hello everybody and welcome to our first week three King of the Hill season two game. We have today our current reigning king. It is Helping Hands playing as USF from the south side of Angerville. And Helping Hands today finds himself up against one of the true leviathans of competitive Company of Heroes play. Fabian, known by his name Farhu, is a true destroyer of mere mortal players. Fabian Farhu is possibly the greatest thing in competitive Company of Heroes play today. He's from the north side of Angerville. He's as the OKW and uh, Helping Hands isn't going to know what's going to hit him. Hans is uh, Hans is in good shape at the moment, eh? Um, interesting. I don't normally see Hans pick USF. Um, no. Um, very interesting. But we are in a new patch, so we could see things change around. But he's normally the Brits. You know what I mean? That's kind of what he's known yeah. for. Yeah. Well, to be honest, obviously that little bit I just did was a little bit of a joke, but taking nothing away from Farhu, he is a great player. And um, he, he, he is going to be playing his absolute hardest today. He's as OKW, and he's up against the United States. And... Dan, I think Hans has gone the United States to be as aggressive as possible in this early game. They're notorious for their early game aggression. That is very true. They do have a good early game. But still, it was OKW that was listed as the most aggressive start game faction. I think mainly down to the uh, to the whole Kubel and uh, Sturm Pioneer combination of constantly repairing and deal damage from the, uh, the MG on the Kubel. Um, that being said, though, I mean, as an early game, Fahu has not gone for much uh, territory capture, hasn't gone for any high resource points. He's defending. He's worried about Hans's aggression as USF hit. As he should be. As he should be. It must be noted, by the way, uh, USF is helping Hans's weakest faction. He is obviously an incredible player that's been playing since 2010 non-stop uh, Company of Heroes series. So he doesn't really have a weak faction, but this is his weakest of the five. So he's actually... Not uh, playing at a handicap, but he's handicapped himself a tiny bit here. Well, you know, if you're uh, if you're in this arena, it's December balance preview. It is a new patch. Maybe he's got something that is going to, uh, you know, that's going to swayed him to show us uh, this faction. But uh, as you say, you know, why not test it out? Why not yeah. test it out right here? Definitely. There's a hell of a lot of new changes. Obviously, the Jacksons had a huge buff. Um, but to be honest, we won't know what he's thinking about until he actually goes one of the commanders, of course. Um, there's a lot of things that have been changed, and uh, a lot of it is in the commander. So very interestingly, Hans uh, has gone for the left-hand side of this map. He's chosen the route with less uh, VPs. Of course, the right-hand side, two VPs with the fuel munitions. Uh, and we don't see that on the left-hand side of the map, though it is a bit more open. Um, which may allow him to create better flanks or, um, or something. What is Hans doing here? He's running into the base <laughs> with, uh, with rifle. This is it. December balance preview, top level strats. I think that was a misclick. Yes, I'm presuming so. So at the moment, by the way, uh, interesting piece of barbed wire on this house. This has a lot of history to it on the uh, the main cutoff house. That's called the, the Malin barbed wire, and it comes from an old uh, Co-1 kind of strat of building from the southwest, but usually if you did that, you don't have the entire west of the map. And uh, Helping Hands certainly has that right now. It's a nice uh, start game because you don't get the vision, you know what I mean, when, when you're by the truck on the right-hand side of the house. You don't get the vision to see if someone creeps in. So it's, a, it's kind of a standard wire. It's a nice wire. It's very helpful. Um, I'm, I'm watching this game and Fahu is doing increasingly better. I think Hans is... Uh, has been a little lackluster at the start of this game. Maybe a little bit cocky, could we say? Yeah, of course, I think cockiness is a big tell of this game. He says, the Stern Pioneers had a foray into the battle there. They were able to push away the mortar and the rear echelon. They aren't able to take the cutoff though now because their rifles are in position. However, the Fortress may be able to do something about it. I certainly hope that they are. And this has been an interesting game to watch because I don't know if you know at the moment, as you've probably seen in game, that uh, Helping Hands is doing boot camp training for Company of Heroes at the moment, um, which is uh, teaching everybody how to play this Cashing game. Cashing in on Humble Bundle. Bundle. Yeah. Cashing <laughs> in on Humble Bundle. Fantastic. But uh, if anybody's going to be able to turn around uh, a start game like this, it will be Helping Hands, and it is one to watch. And we'll try and catch the way that he does it as well. 
So interestingly, on the on the west side of the map, the Kubelvargen and the Folks Grenadier have capped the entirety of that. And uh, Helping Hands has now had a complete reversal of map fortunes against him. Yeah, what he's got to focus on right now is picking a side and getting it all sorted out. And whilst OKW did go left, Hands should easily be able to take the right-hand side. If he gets in these power buildings as well by the cutoffs, he can quickly deny all the resources uh, on Fahu's side of the map. But he needs to act very quickly to get to if control. You, if you were to focus on the, le the le lieutenant right now, you'll notice he has access to the M23 smoke screen grenade if they get the grenade upgrade. One of the curiosities from the balance patch is, of course, officers and rear echelons now have that. Um, which means it really just pushes you to keep these units alive and with the riflemen in order to get them into positions they want to be in. Smoke is a is a change that cam uh, that Hans would have campaigned hard for because uh, he hated the riflemen smoke. That was how mm. he went out in GCS, I think. Actually, yes, um, when was, Loveness. Was... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it was it was used against him um, to a point he, he did not like it. That was possibly one of the best strategic master plays in uh, Company Heroes competitive history. Love Nest had secretly been practicing USF for uh, a month before that semi-final game in UCS against Theodosios in scrims, and he uh, he blindsided Helping Hands by not going Soviets and by going USF and completely caught him off guard and it was one of the most beautiful uh, strategic master plays you'll ever see. Is, it is uh, to be said that Hans has, uh, has had a little disadvantage that we uh, we always see when it comes to these things because he streams all of his games <laughs> and yeah. Lovnest is, uh, is kind of like privately privately playing uh, so it was very very hard to call what what those players that were playing offline were doing but uh, yeah, there was its advantage there not too keen on I mean Hans at the moment is not really connecting any of his strategy uh, sorry uh, strategic points to his resources so uh, Hans is going left and right at the moment with no real success on either side that yeah, said, his army is, is bigger five strategic points in his uh, grasp uh, but Farhu has one trick up its sleeve, and it's the very slowly building 85 second build time Panzer II Luce, which has had some revisions in this patch, and uh, we'll be able to see a few of them. Interestingly, Dan, it's no longer very good against vehicles at all. It's had a target table revision. Nice incendiary nade there. A target table revision, that means it is truly an anti infantry specialist now, with no real overlap. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. So that and the uh, the build increase uh, gives it much more of a, a specific role. I wonder if we'll see it used as often. Um, it's a shame that we don't get to see, you know, the, the battle group and the black half there, because I love the previous changes to that. Fantastic. Um, but the Lukes has just been so dominant in this patch. Sorry, in the live patch. For everybody in chat, I've pasted the patch notes pertaining to the loops in chat for you to read. We do have anti-tank grenades on these rifles. They snare the loops. There is no follow-up, though. For now... Oh, no, if he chases, he can get two more uh, nades off. And, um, he's going to have to wise down. He's going to have to, he's gonna have to literally cut him off. Don't follow the loops, because then you'll lose manpower. You want to go along the bush and find and get around the back. But it looks like he's going to have enough men. But here comes the MG34 to possibly save the day. Oh, it's dangerous. I think he's worried he might lose a squad if he does that. So yeah, he's not going to go. He uses the third uh, 18, which is not going to see any effect really. What it does do at least is give the squad veterancy. Oh, 50 cal's got armor piercing rounds, but the Luke's is well out of there. And I've got to say it, Dan, that was a misplay from Helping Hands. One of the greatest tournament players of the past three years. That was a big misplay from him. I think so too, yeah. Um, he's having a tough game right now, I think, because he's moving to the left and then not locking down, but then he's splitting to the right, and then Fahu is just controlling areas uh, a lot better than he is at this point. Hans needs to, uh, needs to really focus on going one direction and, and making sure he gets those resources out. Because he's falling behind. He's only at plus 13 fuel income. Fahu is on plus 36. So interestingly, that before this game started, uh, we had a poll for fans to vote on, all 200, 300 of them, to vote on how long they thought this game would be. Because obviously Helping Hands on paper is a much better player than Farhu. 
And uh, the most popular choice was uh, 0 to 15 minutes originally with uh, 16 votes. But whilst this game's been going on, people have now been doubling down on 16 to 25 minutes at 20 votes. And now I'm starting to see people vote for 26 minutes plus. The idea was you had to vote before the game, everybody. You have been voting once the game's been on. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it is interesting to see that already people's expectations are being smashed by the Destroyer of Worlds, Bahu. Well, we do have Captain upgrading to Bazookas right now. We also have uh, Bazookas on the rear echelon squads. Uh, one of those at the moment. So not a... Uh, oh, no, they've got the other ones up. So there's not a heavy... Uh, not a heavy anti-tank presence on the field at all right now. Uh, he has got Captains. We can bring out the AT gun if he feels that it is necessary. Um, but he's very, very slowly starting to take some serious points on the map. He's got the strategic cutoff, so far he's not getting the resources left now, and working his way up on the right. So Han's still very much in this game, but Fahu has a lot of resources to play with the counter. He, he really does. Fahu's sitting pretty right now. Just in terms of overall strategic depth, his army is looking a little bit more healthy. And uh, we're left thinking, where's Helping Hand's going to go? What's going to be his tool of choice to get him into this game? And there we have it. He's gone for the Stuart. Interesting. Well, the Stuart, I mean, this is going to replace his AT gun for the moment, so I'm guessing he's happy with the Bazookas, wants to keep applying that mobile pressure. But Fahu has gone double with Hetton, uh, which is... I think hopefully it doesn't catch that Stuart off guard. I don't think it will. Hands goes carefully. Nice little flank from the captain there to get round the PMG. Very, very quickly forced up by Fox Grenadiers. Done. Now we have a large army size on both sides. I just want you to your cameras just to have a look at squad behavior a little bit. Whilst units are moving, you'll notice they separate a lot more and try and look more lifelike. Uh, so when they're moving through terrain, and and if you actually just take it into account now, you can really tell that it has had a big effect on aesthetics. Well, I'll keep an eye out for it. it looks cool. Also, uh, there's, there'll now be a disparity in how uh, units use cover. Elite units will tend to crouch, whereas um, kind of more rookie units. Nice nade. Good nade there by uh, Fahu. Uh, rookie units will tend to go prone and uh, dither, dither around a little bit. Which is a, a bit like Company Heroes 1, you would say? Yeah, not as uh, much as Company Heroes 1 because that probably did it a little bit too much. But it is somewhere in between how Code 2 was and how Code 1 was. I'm very interested about Fahu's strategy here because we see the back tech to battle group but he's going to be using that for healing I assume to stop spending munitions on the stern pioneer medical uh, supply drops but where is his off map commander? I don't think we see one aside from the stern group. So I'd be interested to see what his late game plan is against hands here. Yeah, I mean, also to be noted, he does have Fuhrersturm Doctrine uh, as one of the rebuilt and revamped doctrines in, at his disposal. It's a lot more powerful now, so he could always go for that if he wanted to. That's a ghost MG there. <laughs> Very spooky. So Hans finally has regained some control of the map, which is good to see because it's been a very rocky start for him. Thought he made a nice pet position, but he does hit the side of the building. So uh, awkward positioning there for the head to actually deal damage to the Stuart. Um, but Fahu now is starting to struggle a little bit. He is. He, he is starting to struggle. He does have his battle line prepared. He can hold this line. He's got his Riquette and Verfels. But he is bleeding thanks to the superior micro of Helping Hands. And this superior micro will mean that Helping Hands will win more of these small engagements and the drain Fahu's manpower as the game continues at the scene. Yeah, the, the, the key thing here, in fact both players have been doing it, is putting a lot of pressure on the strategic decaps. You can see that territory that denies left. Fahu's got the one on the right locked down, but doesn't have the territory on the right anymore. So all of that big resource game we saw from Fahu at the start has now been uh, flipped on its head, and actually it is hands on the plus 29 fuel income, Fahu on plus 10. So now it is time for hands to uh, to really take advantage of this. Fahu getting his third SWS out, uh, meaning that we will be quite a while before we see a late game vehicle from Fahu, and I, I think he's put himself at a disadvantage. I think if he gets the Ali IG, um, he, that might help him get into this one a little bit more. Um, why are you laughing, sorry? Oh, please, uh, elaborate. Well, 
he's getting drained at the moment on the battlefield, um, and he's losing a lot, a little bit of manpower to the barred up infantry of helping them. So if he's able to just blink away at them a little bit, he might be able to stabilise on the right side and just hold one VP until his spare panzer's got enough fuel to actually build something. Interesting one. I, I don't know how it's going to handle against infantry if he does that. But, um, well, we'll see uh, an, IS, an ISG. Well, you can't sit behind cover whilst you're you've got mortar fire destroying your <laughs> models. I haven't seen him take that much cover. That's the only, uh, that's the only thing. Hans is uh, Hans is getting the D D wire. We'll call it. He's, uh, starting to change the. the uh, the terraforming that was going on by Fahu at the start of the game, he's now gaining access to these key buildings so we can extract them. Fahu is having to group up his entire army and will catch the captain off guard if he does target fire it. Nice wipe there from the STGs, doing good work. However, uh, Halbergans is continuing to press. He's got himself in a very good position now. Great takedown of the Lukes there, rear echelons actually in that building. Managed to get two sneaky bazooka shots off to finish that. Yeah, the double zook rear echelons. An ever potent force doing great work. You'll notice, however, Hafar, who is on the west side of the map at least, whilst this is going on. However, that possibly means because he's got that manpower there, he's not he's losing this all-important battle in Nice. And we need to be very careful to not lose that Stuart to a second with a Kevin. Um yeah, I think, do you know what, I, I do think Fahu is probably sensible to go to the left though, because he has at least got some territory, but hasn't defended his strategic defense. Hans is going to deny that entire push immediately. Mm, he's just um, been completely cut off. Going west to cap points there was a misplay. He's not had that stern pioneer and the uh, Vet 2 STG folks grenadier in the east where he really needed them, because he's lost control of this heavy garrison in the east now. And Helping Dance was basically able to bat away all of Fahu's uh, control with one single cap. I'm going to be completely honest there. I, I, I haven't thought that Hans has looked particularly strong at the start of this week. Um, and this not to say anything about Fahu at all, but I don't see great logic in a lot of what Fahu's doing. And Hans hasn't capitalised on that. Yeah, I don't think, in all honesty, Dan, it, it sounds mean, but I don't think Hans has taken this particular game overly seriously. And I'm sure as the day progresses, the King is going to have a difficult time taking other games as um, with the same lack of seriousness as he has this one. The contenders will get stronger. We will see some of the big boys starting to play. And although Farhu has battled gallantly, and we thank him for that, um, Helping Hands will surely have sterner tests later on today. Send don't call them up too yet because we're 405 to 320 VPs at the moment. Hans is trying to get some of his resources back. He does have territory linked if he does want to go for the fuel. And uh, yeah, look at this box when it is. They are hugely overextended. They're going to be harassed by the Stuart and the Lieutenant. Those deadly bars tries to get the incendiary off, but it's not going to be too effective. This is a late retreat. He has a lot to run through on the way back, including the m 2 50 cal. Oh, that is the retreat path from hell. He didn't even make it into the 50 cal's vision. He ran past the 50 cal and then kind of slumped alongside him. Stuart, with only one kill, by the way, it must be said, uh, was able to evade the raquette buff. Let's get the hell out of there. Uh, but it's still all hands in this game, though. Yeah, the Stuart nearly went down to those Rakettans. Both Rakettans missed their long-distance shots, which is really, really unfortunate. Fahu's only real chance so far to, to eliminate the Stuart. Uh, coolly taken from him <laughs> by the distance that they took those shots. Uh, but Fahu cannot get a single territory connected to his base right now. He's going to be playing uh, on manpower alone with this Puma. Yeah, he's got Pumas, he's got Rokatans, he's lost a Folks Grenadier. He's, um, you know, he, he's not in a stable position anymore. He needed to control the East. He's lost that now. And now Helping Hans is just a battering ram, pounding on the last keep, uh, entrance to the keep. That is Farhu's resistance. And uh, I don't see any way back for Fabian now. 
Do you reckon Hans has played USF? Maybe he's not particularly dominant with USF because he doesn't want to give away a new strategy for the next game. It's possible. That's that's a very, very positive way of looking at uh, why Helping Hans has played in this particular way in this particular game. I mean, he's not played badly, it must be said. He's clearly winning. Uh, but you might be right there, Dan. Against a threat such as Nagano, I would expect to see maybe a new British strategy unveiled. Absolutely. Against a Against a smaller threat such as Farhu, I would expect Helping Hands to say, oh, I'll, I'll play USF for a laugh. Uh, you, um, you are right to suggest we might get to see a new uh, strategy because Hans has been experimenting with the uh, December Balance preview a lot. And he has brought a lot of strategies our way previously, like uh, the Austrian strategy. And he does a lot of the Brit strategies. Uh, Mobile Assault Regiment, I think, was, was widely his strategies were used uh, post post GCS so you know it's um it is likely that might be the case. It Look at this though as well. Rifleman are gonna put that 18 8 off on the Puma. No, nope, they're not gonna Oh yes they are, there you go. They've I thought they were waiting for backup because Helpians just didn't want to waste the munitions, but he doesn't care anymore. He's just throwing everything he has. He's about to wipe another poach grenadier. Forward element report and infantry unit lost. And there you go. Yeah, we're starting to see Farhu's a uh, few units now as well. It has to be said that the pressure you face coming up against top level players is, um, is another thing I always find really interesting. It's even a disparity in the top 50. Do you know what I mean? You still see players who, uh, whenever I'm watching someone stream and you see a player you know, who's in the top 50, they come up against the top 10 and they're like, yeah, do you know what? I don't really fancy this today. There's <laughs> only about 10 elites coming here as players in the world, if you want to see. Yeah. Or people that have the skill base and the experience base to be an elite player and play uh, to an extent that is truly something to be amazed by. Uh, and then, as you say, there's like a second tier of really good players. Uh, but they, they, you know, when they come up against one of the elite players, your Nagano, your Loveness, your Helping Hands, um, and, and several others uh, that are also extremely good when they need to be and they when they practice like DevM. Um, and, and there are others. I, I could go on. Uh, when they come up against it, you do see a disparity, and it is very evident. Where did the Falchion go? I'm, I'm just, I was trying to look at this because I heard the ability, but I see no Falchion oh, yeah. Was it automatically insta-wiped? Well, no, they, they kind of fall from the sky, I'm guessing, by the, yeah, power drop, so... No, 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 this this is a new change, this is, uh, they start on a, uh, so you click them, Yeah. you click the ability, and then they start on a... What's it called when you've just used it and it's waiting to be used again? Yeah, but cool where down. are they? Cool down. No, they, 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 he is now can cool them in. He hasn't pulled them in yet. They start on a cool down. Oh, I thought I heard the... Okay. Well, the, it would have said they're ready, but I'm sure the vaults... The... <laughs> I'm really confused. I haven't seen... No, Farshim Jaeger, 21-43. They were called oh. in. They died. I don't know where what? they are. <laughs> I don't know where they went. I didn't even get to see them. Maybe, maybe he tried to pop them out of a building and it was like swarmed with allies. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Stuart's going in to contest the Puma. And the rifleman content to chase up the field. One more shot might do it for the Stuart. I think Hans might tempt it. Stuart's got decent enough range. Stuart. Just clips the Puma with the last shot, will not get that finalizer on. And the uh, hands is right outside the base with this 50 cal. Suppressing everything, not letting Fahu get anything. Fahu just cannot find uh, a counter to this. We are at 200 points. So here we go. Zany Zap has said they, they died dropping onto the building. So I think he probably what? tried to. Yeah, he probably tried to call them in as he'd normally call Frau Shimiega. They, I wish we'd seen that. I really wish I'd seen that. Oh, that's hilarious. That is so funny. That is funny. Oh, God, that's, that's really good. <laughs> we need to find that again. Now turns from Right, yeah, so I'm reading it now. So now turns from an infiltration ability to a para drop ability. And then the change I was confused by is all infiltration squads or whatever start with their their, their things on cooldown. But that doesn't apply to Falsh Amigas anymore because they're now a para drop squad, para droop squad, right? However, he just landed them on a house, and they're dead. <laughs> Where are they now? Oh, here they are, here they are. These are the new, uh, yeah, there we go, they're on the other VPs, so... Wait, which house exactly? 
No, no, they've they've now gone to the uh, to the VP. Just dropped another squad successfully oh, okay. this time. So he's, he's redeemed himself. He's uh, <laughs> he's realised immediately. Decided to show us the new <laughs> the new correct way. <laughs> oh, what's this? We've got a, the M26 Pershing tank thundering onto the field. Yep, there it is. That's going to go and deal with the Karshin again. The Stuart Puma engagement has been going on for days. It's uh, a real situation where neither is able to to counter or push the other away. There you go. And then somebody just said in chat, signing up for King of the Hill without reading the notes. It must be said, I've pasted the combined notes into a Word document for the purposes of today. And it's 23 pages long. Nice wipe there by General Pershing. 23 pages long with uh, uh, 7,700 words, which is a lot. What's this uh, AT gun doing? Uh, that stand by was <laughs> having a bad day. <laughs> you see what the AT gun's doing? He's just like walks up behind two yeah. uh, Rikenberg. I think he's looking for the Puma. I think that's, that's, that's what's happening. But the Pershing in now, the Ketten's <laughs> under the tree. They're not able to do anything. This guy's just legged it. He doesn't. Look at the speed! This guy is off the battlefield. He does not want to be anywhere near oh, Angle right now. Puma's about to get a good uh, far booing. Oh, it's bad. Pershing don't give a far who right now. As it's Fabian's that trunk into non existence and helping hands reigns supreme. Well, for the last 15 minutes, and there you go, the, the, the surrender's called in. And far who, by the way, waited until 26 minutes plus, so everybody lost their bet on the poll. Well, good on you, far who. There we go. Let's get back to the lobby. All right. Well, that was uh, an interesting first game. I wish we had seen the Farshim Jäger. It's actually kind of. Uh, I feel like I will have to uh, to go back <laughs> yes. and uh, and find that. But uh, yeah. So helping hands remains the king, and that means, of course, that we're going to do this straight away. We're going to get into uh, the raffle. So I'm going to do that right now, uh, guys. As you hear my voice, the raffle is now open. Uh, so if you didn't By the way, we raffle have a after you heard our... that, it won't be counted. Sorry, Dan. Uh, we actually have a winner of our poll for the time of the game, and 